So in the last slide, we learned about the generalized second price or GSP auctions for sponsored search, which again, really are the dominant paradigm to this day. That's uh, really kind of the number one way that uh, search advertising is handled by real-time auctions. Uh, I did leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end of the last slide, right? Which is, you know, we propose the GSP auction as a generalization of the Vickery auction. And indeed, when K equals one, when there's only one slot, it isn't exactly the Vickery auction. But we never actually discussed whether or not that intuition for why the Vickery auction is truthful holds also for generalized second price auctions. And in fact, let's see by an example that actually it doesn't. So despite you know mimicking the intuition that worked in the single item case, what we came up with, these generalized second price auctions, is not, in fact, a truthful auction. What does it mean to say that uh, GSP is not truthful? It means there are cases where it's in a bidder's interest to bid a non-truthful bid. So uh, as we'll see, it's going to be the bid less than their true valuation. So to construct an example, right, you always want to kind of try to come up with the simplest example you can get away with, given what you're trying to show. Um, so we know we can't get away with having just one slot. We know we can't take K equal one because then the GSP auction is the same as the Vickery auction, which we know is truthful. So if we want an example where the GSP auction is not truthful, we need more than one slot. And so the next one to try would be two slots. And it turns out that will actually be good enough. Um, we also need there to be enough bidders so that there's competition, right? I mean, if there's no competition, then everybody just pays zero and there's not much to do. Um, so we're going to need at least three bidders as well. But we'll be able to get away with that. So two slots, three bidders. Let me now tell you what are the click through rates in our example of the two slots and the valuation per clicks of the three bidders in our example. So we're going to use quite plausible values. So let's say the click through rate of the top slot is 10% or 0.1. Uh, the second slot is half as good, so 5% or 0.05 click through rate. Um, let's assume that the three bidders' valuations are, are 10, 9, and 6. That's their maximum willingness to pay. And remember, valuations are expressed per click. So for a click, a bidder is willing to pay 10, 9, or 6. And remember that bidders are going to care about an impression, which are the goods being sold by the auctions. So they're going to care about being displayed on a search results page only in as much as it might lead to a click. So the valuation per click is going to get multiplied by the click-through rate of whatever slot they wind up in. It's going to be the first bidder that has an incentive to underbid. So let's just go ahead and assume that bidders number two and number three uh, bid truthfully. Uh, remember, truthful bidding, that's supposed to be optimal no matter what other players do. So in particular, it should be optimal if the other players bid truthfully. So let's go ahead and look at number two and number three bidding truthfully. The question now is, should bidder number one bid truthfully also? Should they really bid their actual value of 10 or should they bid something else? So first, let's see what would the utility be of that first player if they do in fact bid truthfully, if they do in fact bid uh, 10. So if the first bidder bids truthfully, if it bids 10, it's obviously gonna come out first in the ranking of the bids. And so a GSP auction will give it the top slot, give it the best slot, which is a click-through rate of alpha sub one. So what then is the utility that bidder number one gets from getting displayed in slot number one? Well, again, remember that uh, the advertisers only care about clicks and they're also only gonna get charged per click. So uh, if that impression is not clicked on, which is 90% of the time, then the utility is zero, right? Because nothing gained, nothing lost. On the other hand, in the 10% of the time that this advertiser does have its link clicked on, that 10% of the time, it's going to get a value of 10 for that click, right? Because that's its valuation. And then what will it have to pay? It'll have to pay the second highest bid, which in this case is nine. That was the bidder of the, the bid of the bidder in the second slot. So the overall utility for an impression for being shown in slot one of this search results page is 10% or 0.1 times that difference. 10, the valuation, minus 9, the payment. This quantity, of course, is also known as 0.1. So that's the utility the bidder number one gets if it bids truthfully and winds up in the top slot. Now, if this auction were to be truthful, it would need to be the case that no matter what else bidder number one could bid, it would still wind up with utility 0.1 or less. But let me now show you that there is a bid that bidder one could make that would actually give it higher utility. Let's look at the case where bidder number one underbids and bids eight instead of 10. So what changes with this underbid? Well, actually two things change. So first of all, 
uh, bitter number one, it winds up in a different slot than it would have had it bid truthfully. If it bid truthfully, it would come out first, get the top slot. Uh, if it underbids and bids eight, now all of a sudden it's bidding less than bidder number two, who was bidding truthfully, was bidding nine. Uh, it is bidding more than the third bidder. It's bidding more than six. So it's going to be in the middle of the three bidders. So that means with this bid, bidder number one will be granted the second slot. And that means that the bidder is going to be having a smaller click-through rate. It's going to get a click-through rate only 5% of the time winning this auction will it actually get a click. But the second thing that's going on is that the price that bidder number one has to pay per click has also changed. When it bid truthfully and when it was in the top slot, it had to pay per click the bid per click of the next advertiser, the one in the second slot, which was nine. Now that it's in the second slot, it does not have to pay that nine, right? Because you look at who's beneath it, you know, look at the third highest bidder, they were bidding six. So the price per click has dropped to six. So the bad news for the bidder is they're getting less clicks. The good news for the bidder is that they're getting those clicks uh, more cheaply. And one line of algebra shows that actually it winds up better off. It winds up with a utility uh, of 0.2 at the end of the day. In this calculation, you'll notice that I use the bidder's valuation 10, not its bid 8. And that is on purpose, right? So if, it's, if we're really discussing, you know, what is the player's utility? How do they feel about it? Right, their assessment of how well they did is really based on what they know was their maximum willingness to pay. It was really based on their valuation. The fact that the bid was eight was sort of irrelevant for the utility computation. Eight is just what they were telling the auction they were willing to pay. But in the utility calculation, we use the bidder's true valuation because that reflects what it really cares about. And so given that we're using the true valuation 10, now all of a sudden it's getting a net utility of uh, four every time it gets a click. Not only gets a click 5% of the time, but still you wind up with a utility uh, of 0.2. And so because this non-truthful bid of 8 gives the bidder more utility than the truthful bid of 10, that proves that a generalized second price auction is not a truthful auction. It does not have that very strong property that we saw was enjoyed by the Vickery auction in the single item case. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I mean, you know, the GSP auction, it's still pretty natural and uh, it performs perfectly well in practice. It would have been nice if we'd had this truthfulness property. It's, it's a little annoying that we don't. Um, and, you know, you might ask, well, this was just kind of the first thing we tried. Uh, if we thought a little bit more harder about our original question, is there an analog, meaning a truthful auction, of the Vickery auction for the more general sponsored search setting, that question is still, at the moment, open to us. Uh, is there or isn't there? GSP is not it, but could something else be a truthful auction? And in fact, uh, there is. There is another sponsored search auction that is truthful, just as truthful as the Vickery auction. Uh, it's an auction known as the VCG auction. The V is for Vickery, and then C and G are for Clark and Groves, who are two other economists who extended Vickery's original idea a little bit later, in the early 70s. So let me just tell you a little bit about how the, uh, the VCG auction works without sort of going too far out into the weeds. Um, it's not that different, frankly, really, than the GSP auctions. Um, and the first step's exactly the same. As far as deciding which uh, advertiser gets which slot, exactly the same. You just rank the advertisers from highest bid to lowest bid. You give the highest bidder the best slot, second highest bidder, second best slot, and so on. Okay, so that part of it's exactly the same. So the difference comes into the pricing rule. So the VCG auction charges prices uh, with a different formula than GSP, and as a result, it winds up being truthful uh, even though GSP was not. And so basically the idea is, um, you know, in GSP, you just charge somebody the next highest bid, whereas in VCG, you charge somebody a weighted average of all of the lower bids, where the coefficients in that weighted average, they depend on the click-through rates. And what's going on here, right, so we had this intuition that we were kind of, we were hoping that in the GSP auction, we were underbidding optimally on someone's behalf, uh, just like we were in a Vickery auction. And if you think about it, we sort of made an incomplete uh, thought experiment. We said, oh, well, you know, if someone's in the second slot and they're bidding 15 and the, the person in the next slot is 13, then, you know, this person could have still gotten the exact same slot, slot number two, while bidding $13.01. So that's what we'll pay them because that's what they could have bid and still wound up in the second slot. We overlooked the possibility that a bidder might prefer to actually move slots, and in particular to drop down to a lower slot, suffering a smaller click-through rate, but perhaps getting a huge bargain on the clicks that they get. And that's exactly what happened in the counterexample uh, on this slide. 
So accordingly, in the BCG mechanism, it's charging sort of smaller prices uh, to the bidders to take away this incentive to drop down to a lower slot. And because it has to protect simultaneously across all possible lower slots that a bidder could try to underbid into, that's why the payments wind up being a weighted average of all of the lower bids, where the coefficients in that weighted average depend on, depend on the click-through rates. So that's the BCG auction. Basically the same as GSP, except instead of just charging 100% of the next lowest bid, you might charge, say, 40% of the next lowest bid, 20% of the bid after that, 10% of the bid after that, uh, and 30% of the bid after that. That would be an example price uh, in the BCG auction. Uh, and then you can prove, and again, I encourage you to look at the lecture notes available from my website site, timruffgarden.org, uh, if you want to see the, the full details. Okay, so the answer is yes, BCG auction uh, is a truthful auction for the sponsored search setting. That's not quite what's actually done usually in practice. Instead, these GSP auctions are used, um, but they're not super different. Still, I sympathize if this kind of bothers you. Like, you know, you, we, we liked this truthfulness property. We thought it was really cool with the Vickery option. There is this option for sponsored search that has that really cool property, and that's not what people are using. So, like, what's up with that? Like, uh, surely there's some reason why GSP must be better than VCG. Otherwise, they'd be using VCG instead. So that's kind of a complicated question, but let me tell you about sort of a few aspects of that. Why, you know, why to this day are, are, are GSP auctions, the non-truthful GSP auctions, so dominant? Uh, in practice. Well, to be honest, the, the first reason and maybe the main reason is just historical accident. Um, so the sponsored search auctions at Google, they were developed in the summer of 2001, uh, so pretty early days in the company's history. And in fact, that was just a little bit before Google had hired any economists. They hired their first chief economist not long after. Uh, also, back you know, now there's a lot of computer scientists who know a lot about option theory. In 2001, most computer scientists knew nothing about auction theory. So they were kind of, you know, having to reinvent it from scratch. So that's what was happening sort of at Google in summer 2001. Okay, they just, if, if they'd known about VCG at that time, they might well have implemented it. But they didn't, so they said, let's try this GSP auction and see how it does. So generalized second price auctions were then rolled out in February of 2002. And really, very soon after, um, it was realized at Google that, oh, wow, well, I guess we could have done this VCG alternative and wound up with a truthful auction, right? But at that point, you know, they'd already rolled out this sort of a initial version of sponsored search ads, and they were doing great right out of the gates. They were having amazing results. And so, you know, inertia then plays a big role to any major change you might want to make, right? There's, there's sort of a, understandably, there was a kind of why fix what ain't broke type of attitude. Back in the early days, um, Google also said that they found the generalized second price auctions easier to explain to advertisers. It was just easier to understand that you pay sort of the bid of the next highest bid of a competitor as opposed to some sort of weighted average of all the lower bids. Uh, and that argument, you know, probably held some water back in the early days. Honestly, now, you know, as these auctions have evolved over time, there's sort of en enough of the auction is sort of so opaque to advertisers. I don't think explanatory power is, is relevant anymore. So, for example, I mentioned at one point that, you know, search engines compute these notions of ad quality. They sort of try to understand the ad-specific dependence on the click-through rate, and that's mostly proprietary. So no one knows how those adjustments are being made, and at that point, you know, you may as well use a more complicated payment formula. That's just one more thing you're going to be shoving under the rug. Another reason why it's a little bit scary to contemplate uh, migrating from GSB to BCG is, is you might be worried about short-term revenue losses. So why would that be true? Well, so what's going the reason GSP is not truthful is because bidders have an incentive to underbid. Right? We saw that in the example. You might want to drop bid low to drop down to a lower slot. You get fewer clicks, but you get them at a big discount. So in GSP, you're going to expect underbidding. And that is indeed what you see in practice. Advertisers tend to bid less than their value, as you'd expect, given the amount of money that's at stake. So now imagine, you know, today we're using GSP. Bidders are underbidding accordingly. And then suppose tonight, tonight at midnight, we flip a switch and it suddenly becomes the VCG, the VCG auction. Well, the immediate effect is the VCG auction is going to be charging lower prices than the GSP auction, right? Because sort of the VCG auction is doing a better job at underbidding on your behalf than the GSP auction was doing. So that means it's going to give you a lower price uh, given your bid compared to the GSP auction. So you flip the switch to the VCG auction, the bids drop. You, are, you need to wait for bidders to realize that they should no longer be shading their bid. You switch to a truthful auction, so they should now raise their bids back to their original valuation. But that's going to take some time. So there's going to be this adjustment period 
where the bidders are still bidding as if they were in a generalized second price auction and therefore underbidding, but you're charging prices, low prices, uh, via the VCG auction. And you know, bidders are gonna figure it out and they're gonna sort of resume bidding truthfully if you do switch to VCG, you know, over time. But there will be a period where you're making less money than before. And it could be that that would be significant enough that it would show up on like a quarterly earnings report. So you can understand sort of the reticence of taking that, um, around taking that risk of losing some short-term revenue just to have, you know, a little bit more strategic simplicity uh, in the long run. And then the final reason is that, well, you know, certainly VCG has benefits of strategic simplicity over generalized second price. Bidders don't have to try to think about how they should be underbidding. Um, if you're just looking at sort of the bottom line, if you're just looking at revenue considerations, it doesn't seem like there'd actually be a very big difference, GSP versus VCG. It seems like they should you know, generate roughly the same amount of revenue. And there's even some theory to back this up. And for those of you that are curious, I encourage you to check out the lecture notes um, off of my homepage for more details. Um, but long run, a kind of you know, evidence suggests that the revenue will you know, be basically revenue neutral, the switch. Um, so as a result, you know, given all of these other issues, there wasn't a compelling enough force um, to do it. And so that's why even though you know, Google and other search engines have known for 18 years or so that there was this truthful alternative to generalized second price, you still dominantly see generalized second price uh, out there in the real world. That concludes module number four. That's what I wanted to tell you about auctions. So you now sort of know the basics, auctions 101 for single item auctions. And you also now know how sort of some of the most important auctions in practice work under the hood, uh, these sponsored search auctions uh, that are used at Google and many other search engines. So where I want to go next for module number five is I want to look at a very different application, which is much more focused on a public good as opposed to the for-profit world. I want to look at large-scale democracy uh, and in particular participatory budgeting. So I'll see you in module number five.